What's going on, New York Giants fans? Back with another Roster Bubble video. If you guys haven't already, you know the drill. Like, comment, and subscribe. Turn the notification button so you get notified when the live stream pops video drops. So this Roster Bubble video will be dedicated to Giants' six-round pick, Gary Brightwell, out of Arizona. I'll give a profile on him. The Giants selected him in the sixth round of this year's draft. I didn't expect big things for him, and this may be shorter than a lot of videos because basically we haven't seen a lot of him, and it was really just based off one preseason game, and it's also dedicated to the other running backs because he's competing with them. But he was chosen out of the University of Arizona, I think it was, if I'm saying that correctly, because, you know, a lot of people say it's not the University of this, that, and the other thing, you know. He was selected out of Arizona in the sixth round, and... After Wayne Gallman departed, after Deion Lewis departed, after Alfred Morris departed for a short amount of time, there was a lot of questions about that running back room. So the Giants picked up Devontae Booker, they picked up Corey Clement, and they picked up Gary Brightwell in the draft. So obviously also as well, they had Colin Gillespie, the fullback, Elijah Penny, and the Austrian dude, Sandro Platzkummer. Now a lot of people expected... You know, Gary Brightwell, including myself, to put some fierce competition up and try to make a roster spot because of the running back depth on this team. Now, I'm going to say this. Um, all this is my opinion. You know, I'm not hiding anything. Number one, there's two things I'm going to say. Number one, I think the possibility that he didn't get week one snaps was either because Joe Judge was holding him out, in which, you know what? Um, I don't have a problem with that. He has to be ready. I don't know if he was injured at one point, but he did not get any snaps. Um, or it could have been the fact that Alfred Morris was on the roster. Um, he got cut after week one's preseason game against the Jets. And obviously, you know, that's sad for Morris. Maybe he retires or something. But I thought that hindered the amount of playing time Brightwell was going to get. Now, you look at week two against the Browns. Everybody was looking for, hey, you know, what's Gary Brightwell going to do? What's he going to do? And I was looking for that too. I said, hey, listen, you know, one of my top players to watch is Gary Brightwell, the sixth round pick out of Arizona. And ladies and gentlemen, and one of my takes, as I said earlier, I'm saying two things and all this is my opinion. He did not impress me. And, you know, I know to have my expectations at a certain level because obviously there's such thing as, you know, um, you know, he's a six round pick, basically what I'm trying to say. I'm not putting my expectations at Saquon Barkley level. But he didn't show me a lot, honestly. You know, take away that run on the two point conversion. He didn't show me a lot. A lot of Giants fans were turned off by his play. Um, he had three carries for seven yards, three receptions for twelve yards. And the issue I had with him, other than not showing much in the run game, and you could also attribute that to the offensive line for the people who have game pass and not the all-22 film. You probably have to go back and watch that. But his receptions were on checkdowns, which was fine. But they were towards the end of the game. He could not get out of bounds. And that took time off the clock. And we only had one timeout left. And it seemed like Brightwell was taking his time. Now, I'm not a guy that likes to question somebody's a uh, flavor for the game, their heart for the game. And I'm not going to question that out of Gary Brightwell, but I'm like, dude, we got 40, 50 seconds left to go, and you're just throwing it to the ref and just walking back. I mean, just didn't look appetizing to me. You know, put aside the effort, even if he done, if, even if he did run as fast as he can, or as fast as he could, I should say, I was not impressed. I just wasn't. Um, you, you saw guys like Corey Clement impress. You saw guys like Sandro Platzcomer impress last week, or I should say the week before last week, um, you know, with an offensive line that was even worse than week two because they got better, let's be honest. Uh, Devontae Booker played better. Corey Clement, you know, it was about what he did the first week. I would say a little drop in his play yards per carry, but he's still doing decently, and he looks to be that third running back coming into the season, backing up Saquon Barkley. And even Eli Penny, he had two carries for 16 yards, and, you know, he was good. I'm not going to lie to you guys there. And uh, that obviously goes into his competition. Who is he beating? Who is he not beating? Uh, in my honest opinion, I think that 
the only person he's beating is Colin Gillespie. Now, we haven't seen film or any specifics about Gillespie on special teams because that's where he shines. He hasn't gotten any receptions or rushes out of the backfield, so that's why I say that Brightwell is beating Gillespie. But in terms of the other running backs, I think he's losing. Um, I don't know what he's showed in camp. Obviously, we could always go back to the beat reporter tweets, but that only says so much. We're not there once again. There's no highlights or I should say live stream practices. There is, but it's not focused on the running backs room all the time. Uh, I think he's losing to Sandro Plattsgummer, Clement, Eli Penny, and Devontae Booker. I honestly think he is. Plattsgummer showed a lot, especially with that big run that I think was like 49 yards, something like that, in week one against the Jets. Corey Clement, obviously, other than that fumble, he showed some promise within the first two weeks. Eli Penny, the same thing. Three carries for 18 yards. And uh, what's his face? Devontae Booker. I mean, he was a lock pretty much to be that second running back on the roster. But he, once again, played well and played better in week two than he did in week one because he was pretty much holding the fort down for the running game other than Corey Clement. And uh, that's what I saw out of those running backs, and I think they're beating Brightwell. And I'm going to be harsh here, but I don't think he makes the roster. I think he makes the practice squad at best. Uh, it's It would be rough around the edges for the Giants to just blatantly cut a six-round pick and not get them back. I mean, there's always possibilities of, oh, my God, this guy went to another team. We can't get him back now. He signed with another team. He signed with the practice squad, whatever. But there are ways that the Giants could sneak him onto the practice squad. And if I'm another team and I'm watching Gary Brightwell, I'm like, you know, what does this guy show? Other than the special teams, I really haven't seen much out of him. That's just my honest opinion, guys. I know a lot of people on Twitter were saying that they didn't really see anything out of Brightwell either. They were kind of underwhelmed in terms of his production. Uh, even though it was late in the game, and I don't care who's your quarterback, what's your offensive line, you have to stand out. And when you have three running backs uh, who are probably locks ahead of you, obviously Saquon Barkley, he's, you know, a lock. I mean, it would be silly to say he's on the bubble uh, other than any injury standpoint. But Booker's a lock. If you're trying to compete with Clement or make yourself stand out so that there's an actual fourth running back on the roster, you have to do a little more. And once again, he had... 19 scrimmage yards on a total of three carries and three receptions. That's not really that impressive. I'm not expecting you to go out there and say, hey, listen, you know, I'm going to go out there and get 100 yards. No, that's not what's going to happen. That's not what the expectation should be for Brightwell. But to my point, to say the least, whatever you want to put it as, uh, I was very disappointed from what I saw from the six-round pick out of Arizona. I think he makes the practice squad. If he doesn't make the practice squad, I think he gets cut. Uh, hasn't really shown anything. And I'm sorry to be tough like that. Obviously, we'll see about the 53-man roster projections. If anything changes on Sunday against the Patriots at 6 p.m. But, uh, you know, as of right now, this is my expectation for Brightwell. This is where I'm putting Brightwell. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. I could definitely be wrong, and I hope to be wrong. Uh, if you guys haven't already, like, comment, subscribe to that notification button so you can notify when live stream pops, video drops. Peace out. See you later, and stay cool.